This is Frankly Speaking with Muywa Afolabi. Information, education, reformation, and transformation. Get ready. Renew your mind. Reset your mindset with insights, ideas, and strategies for everyday performance and success in your career and your business. Yes, it's possible. Yes, you can do it. Of course, you can achieve it. It's all in your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves and please receive Muywa Falabi, your practical career success coach. Enjoy. We believe that boundaries and distance should not stop you from sharing happiness. So join us on the network with the widest coverage and enjoy the freedom to make someone smile even when you are not there. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to you all. Hope you're doing great this morning. Welcome to Frankly Speaking, your favorite business and career mindset talk show on radio. My name is Muywa Afpolabi. It's a pleasure to share again with you this morning. Today, let's talk about opportunities. Are there opportunities for you right now, even in this season? Yes, let's talk about that. So this one I have titled, Blocking Great Opportunities. Blocking Great Opportunities. The smartest and the most legitimate approach to escaping insufficiency, mediocrity, obscurity, lack and stagnation is to identify opportunities and do all we can to utilize them. A major difference between very successful people and those who are not so successful is recognizing opportunities when they see one. Opportunities present themselves every day in our lives. Opportunities don't show up once in a while. In fact, you practically swim in, in opportunities, especially if you live in a country like Nigeria. The only problem is you can't recognize these opportunities. The reason many can't recognize great opportunities is because they already have a preconceived way by which they expect their opportunities to show up and unfold. Many times when people want something, they already have their mind set on how it shall come when it shall come, from whom it shall come, and the way it shall come. Most times, if there's any major alteration in any of these fixed expectations, they wouldn't recognize it as the opportunity they've been waiting for. You want a job in a particular kind of organization, for instance, judging by how much you hear they pay. Anything other than that is a no-no. Even if a different organization offers lower remuneration, but superior prospects, exposure, and experience, simply because it's not marked by the same monetary appeal, it's not a good opportunity. Uh, also, you want your help to come from somebody because you believe that person can help you. Hence, that's the only person you're nice to, you're kind to, you pay attention to, you're caught due respect, and you go the extra mile for. You're indifferent, snooty, and disrespectful to other people simply because you don't think there's anything you want from them. Little did you know, this many people you don't reckon with may have what it takes to offer you on a platter of gold what you're slaving for with the other person you believe can help you. Your uncompromising mental picture of your source of help may have blinded you towards very many opportunities around with other people. Hmm. 
Many times as humans, our perception and mindset are our worst enemies when it comes to recognizing opportunities, taking and utilizing them. Based on our nurture, that is, the way we are raised and how our mind was programmed, influenced and set by those who raised us and of course our environment, we shut great doors of opportunities against ourselves. Culture, tradition, upbringing, religion, age and colonial mentality are some of the many mindset problems holding us captive in mediocrity, smallness and insignificance. To ensure humanity live together as one, the Almighty made sure no one is absolutely independent in this life. You must emotionally, psychologically, materially and or physically depend on others to survive and live a good life. A few years ago, I met a woman who is a devoted Muslim. She wears her full puder regalia with veil covering half her face every time and her hand gloves and stockings always in place. She lectures in one of the universities in the country, a very brilliant and very qualified economist. Of course, she wouldn't shake my hands and she would keep her distance when interacting with me as she would any man who isn't her husband. I'm a Christian, hence I'm not used to interacting this way, but I didn't let the difference in religious convictions get in the way of what I could benefit from interacting with her. Believe me, she remains one of the most brilliant people I've ever interacted with. Most of what she shared with me are still very relevant to most of what I do today and I'm glad I didn't let her choice of how she wants to worship God get in the way of what I could learn from her. I was told a story of a young, brilliant accountant who decided to resign his appointment a few weeks after being employed in this lovely organization. He didn't resign to take on another employment, no. He actually resigned and again joined the employment seekers market. Why? After his appointment, he realized he would be reporting to a woman who incidentally is younger than he is in age and this young woman's boss is also another young woman younger than he is. He's older than both of these ladies and guess what? They are from the same tribe. He couldn't stay simply because he's from a part of the country where the male gender is raised to believe he is superior to the female. Even if he is the last born, as a boy, he is more important, valuable and in fact superior to all his elder sisters. As the male, he makes the decisions on important family matters and the female siblings have no say. <laughs> Their place are in the kitchen and the market. Now you self to shift. Now be only when I get to their own song now. Oh. Levels don't change with empty and my tunes. Whether your name now, Medu, or Cynthia, Abina, Idoko, whether then they call you Ifanyi or Isioma, you self forget your own special song with your own name for inside. Like Ishoma, baby, for lucky, for lucky, give me love. Adebayo. Adebayo. So no be only a dada, caro, for like a abina Johnny get their own song. Mio, you, or any name for this old bodo Nigeria forget your own song. So what are you there waiting for? Just text your name to 441. Make all your colors begin groove to your own name every time they call you. In this part of the country, it is widely believed and entrenched that women are not as smart or intelligent as the male counterpart, hence should not be allowed to make decisions or even be entitled to any inheritance from their parents. Having been raised this way all his life, it was psychologically difficult for him to cope, reporting to two female bosses from his tribe. No, he couldn't handle it, so he left. Hmm. Truth is, many of us are raised with generalized negative beliefs and narratives about other tribes and other religions and other genders and other races. Hence, when we have a first encounter with anyone of this tribe, ethnic group or religion, we judge by what we've been told and what we have decided to believe. This unfortunately robs us of the opportunity to see other people for whom they truly are. Hence, we'll miss the opportunities to benefit or gain anything meaningful from them. We shut the door against great gains from them. The fact that the majority of a tribe or religion or race act in a particular way does not mean each and every one of them is that way. 
judging people before sincerely interacting with them is the costliest mistake many of us keep making and that's why we have remained small, limited and insignificant. Most of the help we need are in the hands of those people we judge and reject before interacting and knowing them. I think God deliberately made it that way. Cross-cultural friendships, relationships, business partnerships and interactions have made most billionaires billionaires today. Go check history. Hmm. If you choose to focus on what you don't like about someone, you will miss out all you truly need from that someone. I don't have to think like you, act like you, behave like you, dress like you, worship like you and reject all that makes me me for you to think I must have something good to offer. I don't have to let go of my roots, my origin, my uniqueness, the way I speak and my source for you to relate well and kindly with me. The man you disdain, the lady you ignore because of tribal, cultural, religious and age differences may have the master key that would unlock your greatness and your glory in this life. I don't have to be like you for you to think I'm somebody just as you shouldn't be like me before I respect and reckon with you. In this difficult socioeconomic times, breaking this restricting mindset, orientation and bias may just be the sustenance you need or even your escape from hard times. Your real help may be in the hands of someone you discriminate against. This will be your loss. Dear friend, be wise. Always keep your doors of great opportunities open. I hope you've learned one or two things from today's episode of the program, ladies and gentlemen. For comments, feedback and connection with me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram and other social media platforms, simply visit my website. It's www.muiwaafolabi.com. Again, www.